Hey there, my pickles, Jill here in the pickle jar, and I'm literally coming to you from my basement in Ontario at about 8.30 at night because I thought this episode was so important. This episode is being inspired by a comment on my YouTube channel, Chronically Fit Canada, to one of the recent episodes I just did with my friend Lisa the other day about what to do when we're not the emergency. So when we're dealing with an emergency situation, how can we make sure that we don't become part of it? How can we manage our cortisol and not risk going into an adrenal crisis um, at the same time and adding to whatever whatever we're dealing with in our life? Um, and there was a great comment um, about, you know, how can I help somebody with adrenal insufficiency when I have to give them, you know, bad news, when I know we're going into a situation that could create a low cortisol and possible an adrenal crisis situation for them. And I thought that was a great, great comment. And I appreciate it so much. And I hope um, you guys find this helpful. So I kind of brainstormed a little bit today um, about what um, I think might be useful for me in an emergency situation. And I have experienced a couple over the years, and I'm kind of in a little bit of one right now as well, um, where, you know, where we've learned from each one. The very first one happened a few years ago. Um, we had a death in the family, and I was the closest person that could go and be with this family member. And I was on still hydrocortisone tablets. I wasn't taking, I wasn't using the pump. So I wasn't as stable as what I am now. And I can remember saying to my sister afterwards, I'm like, next time, like we, we need, um, <laughs> we need a different procedure here because, you know, within 10 minutes and it, and obviously it's going to depend on the situation. It's going to depend on the person with adrenal insufficiency, how they are doing in that moment. We know there's so many factors that affect um, how we're doing at that time. I would say, you know, sometimes I could just be, you know, feel good. And I might just be, you know, I always call it treading just above water. I'm treading water. And you know what, that news might be the one thing that all of a sudden pushes me over the edge with my cortisol and sends me into low cortisol and possible adrenal crisis, or maybe it won't. We, we don't know. And that's, that's the, that's the really hard thing with this illness is that we don't have a measure of what's going on inside of our body. We have to base it on physical symptoms. So um, in this situation with the death, um, I had to get to support my family member and I can remember within 10 minutes shaking and I did my best to take some hydrocortisone tablets and to try myself, calm myself down as much as I could. I remember talking to myself saying, you know what? this isn't about you. This is about her. You have to somehow fight this and get through this. And I was able to. So, um, and then now the situation that I'm going through isn't as stressful, but I have a sick puppy. Um, and, um, he is actually the, the picture <laughs> on, on the YouTube channel, my Miko, he, he's not really a puppy. He's an almost 10 year old Doberman <laughs> that is, um, that, he he's very sick and we're not too sure if he's very sick or not very sick so it's kind of uncertain but my my world's been kind of turned upside down a little bit in the last few days and lack of sleep taking him out three four times in the night and just you know the mama worry and all that stuff that's going on is um is affecting my cortisol levels so um this is this episode's great timing and again I really appreciate the comment so um just because I don't want to forget if you're in Canada I want you to go to the YouTube channel. I'm going to hold up if you're watching this on YouTube. I just dropped some of it. My adrenal crisis kits. Okay, I send them out for free. So you just have to send me a message with your address. Um, there's videos on YouTube about what's in the kit or you can go to my website, chronicallyfitcanada.com. So um, let's get to the little tips that Jill made up <laughs> to, I hope, help people help us deal with an emergency situation so that we don't go low. And I've said it before, sometimes it's just the little things, just the little things that make a big difference for us. The things that seem insignificant to other people can really, really affect us. So, um, so first of all, going back to the basics is just learning as much as you can about our illness, um, whether it's through this YouTube channel, my podcast, you know, communication, doctor's appointments, whatever it is, try to understand and try and trust us as much as possible with our illness. And when we need rest and we need a break and when we say if we need quiet time, you know, we need quiet time. There's a reason. We know our bodies. We know we need to come down a level. We know. We, we, we just know. <laughs> I can't express that enough. We just know. <laughs> okay. Um, but if you're delivering news, obviously you have to um, assess it, I think, based on the news 
if you know that person well, how they usually respond um, to bad news, you know, do they get very anxious? Are they high anxiety? Um, you know, how close are they to the situation? What is their role going to be in this situation to manage it? Um, you know, knowing if you can where their injection kit is, their medications, um, and knowing the symptoms of low cortisol, because like I said, it, it might not happen. It might happen immediately. Um, and knowing that however they're responding, there's probably a good chance they need some extra hydrocortisone and you need to communicate that and trying to figure that out as quickly as possible for them. Um, a quiet location is often very useful. The less stimulation, the better so that they can have their time, their moment, um, and quiet locations afterwards as well. Okay. To, you know, pull their emotions together to kind of figure out a plan. I find a lot of lights, commotion, noise, different things like that is very, very stressful. Um, especially when my cortisol gets low. Okay. Um, I have something that I wrote down that I cannot read. <laughs> so hopefully it comes back to me. Um, um, yeah have a support system. So again, if you know, it's devastating news, um, and they might need other, you know, if you can let other people know what's going on beforehand so that they can come in to support that person. Um, and then just keep asking, ask right away. Do you need to take some extra meds? Do you need to take extra meds and keep asking over and over again. And I think it's also really important to point out, um, you know, it's just not at the time. It's however the length of the time that you're dealing with the situation and even days afterwards, okay, that freight train runs us over, you know, sometimes days afterwards we can manage and then all of a sudden it just, it just takes us out. So um, we're going to need your support afterwards as well, completely, especially if it's emotional trauma. Um, if, it, if it's a loss of a loved one or something very traumatic, um, that emotional stress we all know stays with us for weeks and weeks and weeks and sometimes even longer. Um, and it's going, it's going to affect us. Okay. Um, it can affect somebody honestly for months if they lost somebody very significant in their life. Um, you know, I'm already preparing for, you know, I've been told Nico is, well, he's, he looks amazing, but he's very old for a Doberman. And, um, and then I'm probably not going to have him much longer. And, and I know what I'm going to go through <laughs> when he goes. Um, and I know it's going to be, you know, a long time of me having to manage my cortisol symptoms to updose because I'm going to cry a lot. And crying for me is very, very hard on my cortisol levels. So um, I'm already preparing for that. I know what's coming. I know um, what I'm going to have to deal with, hopefully not anytime soon, but um, it, it is going to happen. So um, other things that I find really hard when my cortisol is low or in a stressful situation is sometimes driving. I find driving very draining. And again, you need to know your person, um, because I'm very stressed if I'm not in the situation. So if there is a medical emergency, um, with a family member, I would need to be in that room. I would need to know what's going on. Um, I would not be able to be at home, not knowing that would be harder on me stress wise than being there. So where some people are completely the opposite and that's okay. So you need to acknowledge um, their role, make them feel significant and functional and useful still in whatever's going on. And that's going to go a long way as well. Uh, food and nutrition is key, um, keeping us fueled, our brains going because we're gonna, if our cortisols go low, it's gonna affect our blood sugar and all kinds of different things like that. And and as best as you can, healthy food, okay? Non, not, in my personal opinion, what I need is healthy non-processed foods. If if I'm eating, you know, if I'm going through the drive through it's just going to stress out my body and make me feel worse. Keep our fluids up, have our salt, know where, even know where our hospital bags are. You know what, be prepared in case we go into an emergency situation as well. And that's just going to, I hope, make the person with adrenal insufficiency feel, you know, a little bit more, assured of what's going on and decrease their stress levels so that they don't go low. They don't go into a crisis situation. So, so those are kind of my quick little tips here that I wanted to share with you. And I'm actually doing this podcast and this video 
in my pajamas. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so if you haven't watched those videos yet, we did one, um, I did one on um, how to pack a hospital bag. Um, I think it's a great resolution right now. Get those bags ready to go so that you have one. Um, watch the one about what to do when we're not the emergency. And then I hope you got some helpful tips about how to help. If you don't have adrenal insufficiency, if you're part of the support system, how to you know deliver news to somebody, how to support them. And again, please keep in mind, once whatever the emergency goes away, there might be a lasting effect. We, we still might need you. We still might need you checking in on us um, and reminding us to take our meds and little things go a long ways. I, I just cannot express that enough. Come over and, and do our laundry or get groceries for us. <laughs> little things like take the garbage out. It, it seems so, so little, but when you're low cortisol, trust me, it makes a huge difference. Okay. Show us some love by taking our garbage out. So if you're interested in adrenal crisis kit, if you're in Canada, please check them out. Um, watch the videos on YouTube. If you find value at all in these videos, um, please subscribe. But more importantly, please comment because I got this idea from that comment and I think it was a fabulous, fabulous comment and I appreciate it so much. So um, check it out. Go to my website, Chronically Fit Canada, and until next time, please be well, my pickles.